In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Growing up, I loved to watch a reality TV show called America's Funniest Home Videos. My favorite part was when they would show the wedding bloopers. You know, things like the ring bearer's pants fall down, someone in the bridal party faints, someone tripping and falling into the wedding cake, or, dare I say, a wardrobe malfunction. In our lesson for today, Jesus attends a wedding at Cana in Galilee. And while he is there, there's a major blooper. They run out of wine. Now back in Jesus' day, running out of wine would have meant a major embarrassment, a big social faux pas. And so it is that Jesus chooses to do his first miracle, turning water into wine. Now I want you to notice that the greatest thing that this couple could have done was invite Jesus to the wedding. So let me ask you, do you invite Jesus to the party of your life? Now I'm not talking about accepting Jesus into your heart. I'm asking, do you call on Jesus in prayer and invite him to do miracles in your daily life? We always begin our meals by inviting Jesus when we say, Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. But do you and I invite Jesus to be present in our daily lives? If we don't, we should. We should start each morning in prayer, inviting Jesus to guide us in all that we say and do. They have no wine. With those words, Mary speaks a truth about our lives. A truth that at some point we all experience. There comes a day when our wine runs out. The glass is empty, the party is over. On that day, life seems empty and dry. Nothing is growing or fermenting within us. Our world feels cold, gloomy, and bitter, just like it is outside. With no sun, just days of overcast sadness. Mary's words today call us to examine our lives and ask, where has the wine of our life given out? What relationships have run dry? What parts of us remain empty? We all have our own story about the day our wine gave out. It might be the death of a loved one or the loss of a friendship or marriage. Some will speak about their search for love and acceptance. Some will describe their thirst for meaning and significance in this life. Others will tell of the guilt, disappointments, or regrets. Many of the stories will be about fear or what it is and what it might be. They're not all stories from the past, however. Some of us are living those stories today. This week has been an especially hard week for me as a pastor. I had several people who came to me because their wine has run dry. And they knew that their only hope was inviting Jesus to light the way. A spouse who found out their spouse was cheating. A member who found out their loved one has cancer and it has spread. A person on hospice who made their final arrangements. And finally, last night, I received a call that one of our young members was notified that their dad who was missing was found dead. Behind each one of these stories is hope and desire for Jesus to have his way in our life, to do a miracle. We come to the wedding at Cana, not simply as guests and spectators, but as participants, as a bride or groom seeking union, intimacy, and wholeness. Despite our best efforts, good intentions, and hard work, however, we can't do it on our own, no matter how hard we try. 
We need Jesus to have his way in our life. No matter how often we refill it, our glass remains empty. There's never enough wine. That must have been what it was like for that couple at the wedding in Cana. They have no wine, Mary tells Jesus. But in the end, this story is not just about wine. It's all about Jesus being invited to the wedding. It's about you and me as much as it is about the wedding in Cana of Galilee. It's a statement about the sinful human condition where we are all begging Jesus to do a miracle in our sinful, cold, broken life. Now I want you to listen very closely. Regardless of how it feels, the day the Rhine runs out is the beginning of a miracle. Every time the wine of our life runs out, we have an opportunity to invite Jesus, who is already present, to lead the way. For when the wine of our lives run out, Christ does not simply refill our glass. He comes to transform our lives, turning water into wine. John tells us in our text, it is, after all, the third day, the day of resurrection and new life, that which was colorless is now vibrant. That which had no taste now tingles the tongue. That which has no life is now fermenting, active, and alive. On the third day, our lives are filled to the brim with the good wine, intoxicating us with the life of God, inebriating us with the very blood of Christ, and leaving us under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's the true miracle at Cana in Galilee. Every moment of every day, Christ pours himself into the empty jars of our life. Every time we invite Christ to be our guest, our lives are changed and transformed in miraculous ways. That's why I wanted to have church so bad today, because in the sacrament, we are brought out of the air into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into new life. I, like you, have experienced the miracle at Cana in my life and seen it in the lives of others. I've experienced moments when death is turned into life, sorrow into joy and despair into hope. But this only happens when we allow Jesus to have his way. For it is in that moment when Christ's glory is revealed and we are illumined and strengthened to live the Christian life. Here's your one takeaway. In some sense, we don't need to invite Jesus into our lives for he is always present. But we are reminded that we are called to let Jesus have his way in all that we say and do. And that we should invite him, not just at mealtimes, but in all aspects of our life. You are invited. Come to the party. Jesus is present. It's the wedding feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. So come, celebrate the joy we now have in our preliminary party here every Sunday as we eagerly await the eternal party that is yet to come. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. In the holy name of Jesus, amen.